Once more, welcome to Kibabe University. My name is Victor Samuel Okello. I'm a lecturer in the Department of Biological and Environmental Sciences. I'll be taking you through this course, SBT 100, and the course title is Basic Botany. Now, from your background in high school, we all know what botany is. Basically, just the study of plants. Now, in this course, we are going to look at the basics within botany. Now, all of us know what plants are. Plants are organisms that manufacture their own food. Therefore, we say they have an autotrophic mode of nutrition. And they do this by a process called photosynthesis, by simply transforming the light energy into chemical energy. Now, plants are angered in one place. That means they are static. They don't move. And... Uh, for plants to manufacture their food, they use the leaves. Within the leaves, you know, we have pigments called chlorophyll that are used for trapping the light energy. And then eventually the process of photosynthesis is complete. Now plants will require just water. And this water is within the environment with the minerals will be able to be transformed into carbohydrates then the plants will use this for growth and eventually they'll increase in size now because plants are static they are immobile they are extremely responsive to the environmental cues or the environmental conditions and therefore this makes plants to have their life cycle to be in perfect synchrony with the seasons within the environment so you'll find plants shedding their leaves times when the environment is very hot or when we have a dry weather condition. Now, plants have a very unique mode of development. They grow by the meristems that are present at their tips, either at the root tips or at the shoot tips. Now, these cells that differentiate are the ones that are capable of growth so you'll have undifferentiated cells differentiating and therefore making the plant to increase in size what we call growth plants the plant cells have a great remarkable power of regeneration a single plant cell can regenerate and form an entire whole plant with all the cell types. Now, in high school, you are told that the difference between a plant cell and an animal cell is the presence of a cellulose cell wall within the plant cell. Now, plants can be categorized into several groupings. First of all, we categorize plants as either higher plants or as lower plants. The lower plants are referred to as the cryptogams, while the higher plants are referred to as the phanerograms. Now, the cryptogams are made of the algae, fungi, lichens, bryophytes and pteridophytes now the phanerograms are made of or constitute the gymnosperms and the angiosperms now within the plant kingdom again we can either categorize plants as being either thallophytes or as being uh, tracheophytes the thallophytes have plant bodies that do not have uh, elements or vessels for transportation of materials within the plant, while the 
tracheophytes have vessels, elements, that are responsible for the movement of material within the plant. So the algae, fungi, lichens, bryophytes, and pteridophytes constitute the thallophytes, while the gymnosperms, sorry, the, the pteridophytes are in, not inclusive of the thallophytes. So the algae, fungi, lichens, and bryophytes constitute the thallophytes, while pteridophytes, gymnosperms, and angiosperms constitute the tracheophytes, because we have some pteridophytes that have developed uh, transport systems within them. Now, when you look at the body of a, an algae, we call we say it is a it's a thalo, it's a thallus, because they do not have roots, they do not have stems, and they also don't have even leaves. So these plants inhabit very damp places on the land surface. When you find places that are moist, that's the place you will find uh, the algae inhabiting. In botany, we say they colonize. So when they inhabit a place, we say they, are, they colonize that place. Now, when you look at the life cycle of the algae, they have two distinct phases in their life cycle. We have a, 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 a phase or a portion referred to as the sporophyte and another portion referred to as the gametophyte. Now, the sporophyte is always dependent on the gametophyte. So at all times, you'll find that it is attached onto the gametophyte. In other words, in the absence of a gametophyte, then we cannot have a sporophyte. Bryophytes are known to have occurred on the land surface when there was a lot of water. So the bryophytes transited from water to a terrestrial environment or land. But bryophytes still require water for the completion of their life cycle. And this is because they produce gametes that require to move and it's only water that can aid the movement of these gametes so in the absence of water the gametes from the bryophytes cannot move and therefore the process of fertilization where we have the union of the male and female gametes cannot occur because of the requirement of water for the completion of their life cycle Bryophytes are normally referred to as amphibians of the plant kingdom. We when you look at the algae, you'll realize that they exhibit a great biological diversity. They have the ability to produce a variety of metabolic products. And these products are normally extensively exploited in biotechnology. Algae are also known to be an important source of food for fresh water and marine organisms and they also supply oxygen to them. You'll find that algae are also used as biofertilizers and this is because they aid in the fixation or in the fixing of nitrogen to the soils. So farmers will grow can grow in their fields and have algae fixing nitrogen to enrich their soils. Algae are also very essential because they control the pollution in water bodies. So they are used mainly in the purification of sewerage. Now we say that the trichophytes are made of the pteridophytes, the gymnosperms, and the angiosperms. And we have already said that uh, this is because they have vascular, they have a vascular system, and they are also referred to as the vascular plants. So it means that the lower plants that we refer to as the thallophytes that do not have a vascular system can also be referred to as non-vascular plants. And this is because they don't have vascular tissues for conducting water 
or food which is present in the tracheophytes or the vascular plant. Now the vascular plants or the tracheophytes are the largest group of plants and they include the seed producing plants and these seed producing plants are the flowering plants as well as the non-flowering plants which are the gymnosperms and the spore bearing plants which are the pteridophytes. Now, I think this forms a, a basis for the introduction of this course. In the next lecture, we'll be looking at the algae.